Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now, anyone with the slightest knowledge of investing would know how rewarding can small caps be. They have extreme growth potential, but only those who can stomach volatility should invest in them. If you have any query about small caps and how rewarding can they be, watch today's episode. For today, our in-house experts will tell you all about it. Stay tuned. Small caps can be very rewarding. The whole story of equity investment is all about, you know, spotting a company or spotting a bunch of small companies uh, with the hope that they will turn big. And as and when they turn big, they turn out to be a multi-bagger. Your money multiplies in a manner which is unexpected. It looks magical. And that is the charm of small cap investing and investors get attracted to it. There are caveats to this. Just let me give you an example, you know, or, or the context of this. In 2007, uh, the year before the global financial crisis, small caps went up by 66%. And the year after, 2008, the whole global financial crisis happened. Every investor was running for cover. And small caps went down by 57%. That is something which is stomach churning. You know, it's very difficult to navigate through that. If you invested at the peak and you saw your 100 rupees become 25 rupees, it is very difficult to stay around and stay back and, you know, uh, reconcile with this big fall or this free fall, what I would say. And then the next year, it went up by 100% again. It doubled, uh, nearly doubled, you know, 95, 93%. So I'm referring to all these numbers in terms of the average of the small cap funds. So look at the graph, you know, you will get a perspective that they are rewarding and they are extremely volatile. So. To benefit from small caps, you have to really train yourself. And I think it takes a couple of years to get used to it. Just to get a context of the or get a sense of the re rewards of investing in small cap funds. If you invested in the best performing fund, a 5,000 rupees every month uh, unfailingly for 10 years, your contribution or your investment of rupees 6 lakh rupees would have turned into 21 lakh rupees over the past uh, 10 years. That is a 25% annualized return. 25% annualized return is uh, nearly little over three three times more than what you earn from fixed uh, fixed income. If you look at the average fund, not the extraordinary fund, because it's very difficult to spot the best fund, the best fund which will be over the next 10 years. Assuming you end up being an average small cap invest fund investor, then your money would have become nearly 15 lakh 22,000 rupees which is also a very handsome return, nearly 18%, which is twice as much or, you know, little more than tw twice as much than what you will earn from fixed income. And if you invested in the worst fund, if you are very, very good at spotting the worst fund and you are, you are very unlucky in picking the fund, which turned out to be the worst small cap fund, then, then also it will be about a little over 12 lakh rupees which is about 14% annualized return. 14% annual, annualized return by any yardstick over a 10 year period is a very handsome return when you compare it with the prevailing interest rates and what you get on a risk-free basis, what you get from a fixed deposit. So small cap has the rewards, just stick around. The biggest uh, disadvantage of small cap is that they are scary when they fall they look like they will never stop falling or they will go down to zero. It's a very regular thing. Whenever you get excited about or when you feel happy about your investment in small cap, it is immediately followed by a big dec decline. So that is something which you have to really train your mind for because uh, small cap is not everybody's cup of tea and definitely not for anybody who is getting started because uh, uh, the, the general psychology is that, you know, if your investment goes up by 10%, you feel happy. And your investment goes down by 10%, you are not only unhappy, you are three times more unhappy. So the, the impact of decline, the impact of loss on your mind is far more severe. Because investing is a very positive endeavor. You are trying to improve your life, you are trying to have more in future, you are postponing your consumption. So it's a difficult thing. And when you see there's such a severe decline in value, it's quite unnerving. So the biggest problem is that uh, they are wide. On the upside, we, we get attracted. On the downside, we get very scared. 
the second is that you know many of the uh, their the cycle can be longer they can fall and they can remain falling for a while before and it they can be a test of your patience and then there could be a, you know if you are investing in small cap stocks yourself there could be you know small cap companies die uh, they are more vulnerable they are more fragile they are small they are unable to withstand the economic cycles uh, a downturn in economic cycle just to get a sense of you know the magnitude of decline in small caps uh, of course you know we find that the markets do fall and when they fall they fall freely but uh, small cap index the worst one week decline was 20% or uh, you know the worst uh, one month in the life of uh, the small cap universe over the last 10 years was it went down by 38% or you look at the three months, you know, going down by 31%. So small caps could be uh, very damaging. They could be a test of your uh, tolerance for the fall. There is a distinct disadvantage of small cap fund, which is uh, if the fund manager is, uh, succeeds with a couple of uh, his bets, it has a disproportionate effect. You know, it is not unusual for a small cap fund to go up by 50% in three months time. And when that happens, a lot of investors just pour money. And uh, when they pour money, the fund gets big. And when the fund gets big, it gets difficult for the fund manager to follow or, you know, doing, do the things that he has been doing to succeed uh, in the same manner. Because uh, when a small cap fund becomes turns big, because a lot more investors are putting money, it gets difficult for it to replicate what it has been doing in the past. So this is one thing which, uh, you know, this is, the disadvantage of succeeding, what is called in the mutual fund context, called winner's curse. A fund wins and then it is cursed with a lot of money pouring into it and that becomes a serious impediment for it to succeed in future. You can't do anything about the fall, but all you can do is make yourself understand that that is how they are, that is the nature of the beast. So make yourself understand that that, that is how they will be. Second is that, you know, you can uh, have a long time frame only when you are thinking that you are investing for 10 years that you will not be unnerved by today's fall because you, are, you still have time. If you invest your short term money, you will uh, any kind of reconciliation is not possible because you need the money and you don't have the time and small caps will not oblige you. These funds don't know that you how important your money is uh, when they fall, they fall. So two things which you can do. One is diversify and be regular with your investment. Third is that have a long time frame and have a seven to 10 years time frame when investing in small caps. And I think fourth, the cautionary thing which I would say is, uh, is about small cap stocks. If you can't diversify well, if you can't choose them carefully, if you run the risk of being a speculator well while getting into a small cap, keep off from them. If you're a relatively new investor, don't even consider investing in stocks directly, leave aside small caps. Investing in small, cap small caps require a great deal of effort. A lot of people think that, you know, you just buy and sleep over it and it, things will work out. No, you need a temperament. You need great effort to spot that company which, will, which has the potential. In between, every now and then you will be getting an indication that your hypothesis is wrong. All that you have learned or believed or thought that it will work out is proving to be wrong. And that is when, you know, uh, th that is actually a, a conviction comes into play. How much can you expand your understanding? So multiple things needed to, to succeed as a small cap investor or a micro cap investor, which is your ability to understand very deeply about these companies, your belief system, you believe that it will do and you are able to validate that to be able to look at them in a dispassionate way. And then you need multiple ideas because just despite best of your effort, many of these companies will die. Many of these companies will disappear. So unless you diversify, unless you have 15 companies, 20 companies, 25 companies, you will, you cannot succeed. Because even if you have 20 companies and five of these companies, five of the 20 disappear, then only you can be taken care of because that will happen despite best of your effort. So uh, it's a tough thing. And uh, one should do it after a great deal of understanding, learning, experience and developing a temperament. Maybe once you become an investor and 10 years of learning, 
I think you will be better equipped to succeed as a small cap investor. Most individual investors cannot navigate through this complex way of investing or you know the way to succeed with small cap uh, stocks. So they will be much better off. The likelihood of succeeding with your small cap is through small cap mutual fund. They provide you very basic uh, you know benefits which is you can do your SIP, you can do your 5000 rupee SIP, you can do your 10000 rupee SIP. You are able to instantly diversify and most of the fund managers have succeeded in keeping away from companies which disappear which die because that is one of the biggest risks of when investing in small cap stocks that uh, the company might be good the business might be okay but the promoter might be a might be a crooked one and he will steal the money from the company so mutual funds have done a better job of uh, keeping off from such companies substantially not not completely but they have been reasonably successful in doing that so small cap mutual funds do provide you a very convenient vehicle to participate in this choosing a small cap fund uh, the same yardstick that you will apply for any equity fund that look at a full cycle performance because many a times we get attracted to a fund only when it has done very well in the recent past two months return, three months return, one year return might look very attractive. But uh, how the fund has done in a declining phase of the market, rising phase of the market, and that is what matters because you are going to invest for the long term. Second is that, you know, uh, how experienced is the fund manager because here the fund manager really matters. In case of large cap com large companies, mid-sized companies or larger mid-sized companies, you don't have the risk of knowing the company in great detail in terms of who is running the company. In this case, you know, the small cap fund manager needs a very perceptive, you know, must be very perceptive of who is running the company. Are they trustworthy enough? Yeah, I think trust is the key and that requires hard work because small cap in investing, uh, you know, requires meeting company, understanding where they are, how they are configured, what are the motivation. Do they have it in them? In fact, it is a call on a person who is running a company that do it. Do they have it in them that they really can scale themselves up into a large company? And third is that, you know, when looking at a large cap fund or I'm looking at a mid cap fund or I'm looking at a large and mid cap or a flexi cap fund, compared to that, finding small cap ideas is very difficult. And when a small cap fund becomes very big, um, big meaning bigger than a seven eight thousand crore then it gets very difficult for fund managers to keep looking for small cap ideas because uh, small cap companies have a distinct problem the distinct problem is that uh, they are not very actively traded if you want to buy say 10 lakh shares of reliance industry or hdfc bank or infosys you can just do it you 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 know ask your broker and he'll deliver you because that is the kind of liquidity in the market if you want to buy the stock of a small company if you want to buy five and five lakh shares of that company the price will go up by 20 percent because there isn't enough uh, liquidity there the promoters normally own more than 50 60 percent of good small cap companies uh, so finding stocks having an impact cost and uh, so spotting a company and having enough uh, you know liquidity in the market and your liquidity when you want to buy liquidity in those stocks when you want to sell because many a times when you change your mind about a company that you thought this is a great small cap company small company you bought its stock and you bought its stock a million shares and when you go to sell it you may not be able to find buyers or if you somehow desperately sell it the price will go down by 50 percent so there is an impact cost there is a lack of liquidity so that is an added risk. Most importantly, uh, when these funds actually become very large, more than 10,000 crore, then even if the fund manager is very lucky to spot a small cap company and buy it in modest number, modest quantity, say 2% of the fund is invested in a small cap and it becomes a blockbuster, it doubles, it will not have a meaningful impact on the fund. So. If there's a 10,000 crore company, 2% of that investing in a company, get invested in a company, the fund manager succeeds and it becomes a blockbuster, it has no impact. So a, a large size of a fund is uh, injurious to a small cap much more than others.
so keep that these things in mind but i think besides all this i would say that your discipline matters most uh, sticking through these small cap funds and carrying your sip through the bad times through the lean times is a crucial uh, you know uh, is the biggest contributor to your success well that's all we have for you in today's episode keep watching this space for more information and if you like the show please subscribe to our youtube channel take care bye for now